Hey, welcome to another episode of the Typewriter video series. Today I'm going to talk about my preparations for attending the Type In in Phoenix, Arizona this coming Saturday. And I'm going to talk about how I've decided to bring a number of my machines from my collection to possibly give away, trade, or sell. So stay tuned. Now it might not come as any surprise to you to know that um, as a typewriter collector I've amassed approximately 16 typewriters in my house over the years. That's my current total. Um, but in order to foster domestic tranquility and just to maybe prioritize the direction of my collection, I've decided that there are some machines that I'd like to uh, offload and give to some uh, people that give or sell to somebody that might appreciate them. Keep in mind that all of my typewriters are functional. Um, I buy typewriters to use, not just to look pretty. So in order to figure out how to prioritize which ones to keep and which ones to get rid of, I've kind of come up with a hit list, and the first round of the hit list was kind of uh, derived at by gut feel, by intuition. Then I decided that I needed a little bit more rationale in explaining which machines I'd be keeping and which ones I'd be uh, trying to get rid of. So I came up with a point system for rating the typewriters. And this is my own personal subjective point system. Your system might be different, but let's take a look at it. Well, here is uh, one way that I've organized uh, these typewriters in a point system. What I have is a list of typewriters. Now, this is a list of all the ones I'm keeping. First of all, we'll go through that. What I have is I have a column that rates it by looks, by feel, and by print. Looks has to do with the aesthetics of how the typewriter, typewriter's appearance is. Feel has to do with the haptics of how it, easy it is to type with and how it feels to type with it. And print is the print quality, what kind of an imprint it makes. And what I've done is I've rated each one of these on a point system and then there's going to be a total. Now, the point system for my use is weighted. There is uh, for looks and print, there is either a zero score, a one-half score, or a one score for both looks and print. But I rate the feel or the haptics of the typewriter to be very important, and so the rating on this is weighted. There's a zero, a one-half, or a two. If it's really good, it's going to be much better than the others, and uh, that's a real important consideration for me. Your rating system might weight one of the other factors more. But this is my, my rating system, and let's go through it and see what we got. Well, the, uh, this, so this is done in no particular order. It's not alphabetical. It's not rated in terms of, uh, you know, uh, score level or anything. This is just kind of a random sample. We'll start with a Webster 740, XL 747 made by Brother. I call it the Web Bro 747. Looks is a one. It's a, it really is a nice little blue, uh, pretty little typewriter all metal body, it, portable, it's great. The feel of the keys uh, typing is only about a half. Um, really maybe should have been a zero. And then the print quality is good, it's a one. So it rates at a two and a half, it maybe should have been a two, but it's, it's a pretty good machine. The next one's another little portable, is the Royal Mercury. The looks, I think, is just kind of plastic boxy, nothing special, it's a zero. The feel of it is, it's a portable, it's not great, it's a one half, and then the print quality is good, it's a one. So it scores a one and a half, fairly low, but I'm keeping it because it is a portable. Okay, the Hermes Rocket, the ultra portable. The looks, I think, is up there, it's a one. It's a cute little nice 1940s, 50s style portable. The feel of it is, it's a one half, it's not a great feeling typewriter, and the print quality is good. So it scores at a two and a half, pretty high, and I think it maybe scores a little higher than the Webster uh, Brother. Uh, this probably should be a two. So I have an Olympia SM9 wide carriage in the 1970s, the newer body style. I was really thinking about whether this should have been a one half or a one for the looks. I gave it a one half. 
only because it may not be quite as preferable to the more rounded style of bodies from the 50s uh, or 60s. But anyways, the feel of it, it is a two. It is, a, it is top notch in the haptics. And the print quality is a one. So this thing rates in at a three and a half. So that's, that is consistent with what most people consider to be true with these Olympia SM9 series. Okay, I have a Hermes 3000. This is the boxy 70s styles one. So I think the uh, looks is maybe a one half. It's not as nice as the more rounded style. The feel of it is definitely a two and the print quality is definitely up there. So again, it's a three and a half. It rates about similar to the Olympia SM9. I have the other Hermes 3000, that's the Naked Rider. So this is the naked chassis of a Hermes 3000 that's uh, on display on a wooden base. I'm going to take this machine to the type in in Phoenix. I think looks is a one because it, it, I've removed it from the boxy chassis and it's uh, I think it's nicer looking open as it is. The feel of it is definitely a two, and then the print quality is not as good as the other Hermes 3000 because it has a skipping issue. So again, it rates at a three and a half. If it had a better print quality, it would be a four. Smith Corona Silent from the 1950s, I think it rates a one half on looks uh, only because of that rounded crinkle paint kind of 50s look in those darker drab colors, not quite as preferable in my view, but this is all a matter of taste. This whole looks column is about one's personal taste. So a one half on the, on the looks, a two definitely on feel and haptics, and a one half on the print quality. There's a few little issues with the print quality, but it's a three. It's way up there. I have a Smith Corona Super uh, Silent Super. Again, the looks is about the same as the other one. Uh, the feel is great and the print quality is marginal. So again, it's about a three. And you can see where both of these Smith Corona Silence are just about up there with the Hermes 3000. And that's pretty consistent with what most people in the blogger community seem to think, I think. I have an Underwood, Olivetti Underwood 21. It's a bigger, medium-sized typewriter. The looks is only maybe about a one half. It's not nearly as nice looking as the Olivetti uh, Letter of 22s. I think the feel of it is definitely a two and the print quality is a one. So it's up there. It's a three and a half and that's a keeper. I have a Smith Corona Standard. This is that uh, sleek little pretty black thing I got. Heirloom quality and you'll see why from the score. But the looks is definitely a one. The haptics is definitely a two and the print quality is definitely a one. It scores a four. It's the highest score of my entire collection. And that's consistent with how I feel about it. Lastly is an electrified typewriter, the Smith Corona Coronet Automatic 12. I think the looks is a zero. It's just kind of ugly. Uh, but the feel of it is great and the print quality is great. So it's a three. Well, so what I've done is I've laid out all five machines here on my front porch patio table. And I'll just go through them and name them. So we have an Olivetti under, uh, un sorry, um, Underwood Olivetti Letter of 22. This is an Olivetti letter of 22, so this one was after Olivetti, Underwood bought Olivetti. So these are, this one is, uh, I think this one is the British keyboard, this is the American keyboard. Anyways, and then we have a Smith Corona Galaxy 12, okay, two-tone blue. And then over here on the other side of the table, we have an Underwood Universal from 1936. And we have the Corona 4 from the late 1920s. These are on the hit list. And you might be questioning why get rid of these two. Okay, so here's the hit list and how the scoring is for this. So again, we're, we're listing the five machines here. We're going to have the same scoring system that's weighted slightly in favor of haptics or feel of the keyboard. So let's go through them. So I have two Olivetti Letter of 22s. One of them is an American keyboard. One is a British style keyboard. One is branded Olivetti. One is branded Olivetti Underwood. I think they both score a one in the looks department because you can't uh, argue with the, mid, the classic mid 20th century style and design, which has been recognized by the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Uh, as far as the feel of them, I find both of my machines to be mushy. And, it, and one of them is worse than the other, but I'm rating both of them at about a half. It just, they just do not have good haptics. In spite of their reputation for being great typewriters, I don't really think so. Um, I've had three Olivetti Letter of 22s. I've done a lot of work on them, and I'm just not pleased with them overall. 
Um, I know they're portables, and I know that portables always have a compromise, but I'm rating it a, a, the feel as a half, and print quality on both of these is only a half because they both have issues that I can't fix. So they have a score of two. Not bad, but not so, not so good. And you might notice the score on these is better than the little Royal Mercury that I'm keeping. And the reason why is I'm keeping the Royal Mercury is really because the print quality is better on the Royal Mercury and the feel is, although about the same on the Royal Mercury, it's not mushy. It's a little hard, if, in fact, which maybe I prefer that. I don't know. So here's the Smith Corona Galaxy 12. It's a two-tone blue wide carriage, the standard big all uh, Smith Coronas. I think by looks, so this is all you know, a uh, subjective thing. I was going to give it a one half, but I gave it a zero. Um, they are kind of an interesting mid 20th century boxy plastic look, but it's not as sexy of an, as an older style machine from the 30s or 40s or 50s. Um, the feel of it, however, is great. The, the haptics are great and the print quality is great. So it, it ranks at a three. And you might ask yourself, well, if this thing scores at a three, why are you getting rid of it? And the question is, that is a good question. If you look at the scoring and everything, even the color of it, maybe it needs a one half instead of a zero because it's a nice two-tone blue, which would raise the score to a three and a half, which would put it in the same league as, you know, the Hermes 3000s and those other great typewriters I'm keeping. Why am I keep not getting, uh, not keeping this one? Well. Part of it has to do with, I just need to offload some typewriters. I need to make room. The second thing is, I have the electrified Smith Corona Coronet Automatic 12. It's essentially the same body style, so I already have that in terms of body style. And I have a, a, other machines that rate three, three and a half. So I have Hermes and I have Olympias. So I really have to make a decision and get rid of them. And between all those great machines, I'm sorry, but the Smith Corona goes. And it's going to find a good home, hopefully. Okay, these last two machines, uh, you might wonder, why are you getting rid of those? This is a perfectly functional 1936 Underwood Universal. It was professionally restored. But as far as the looks goes, yeah, it's a 1930s machine. Um, it has beautiful nickel trim and the round keys, but I'm only giving it a, a score of a half. Now, that's subjective. You might score it as a one, which would bring the score up to a two. Uh, the feel of it, I think, is only a half. It's not a bad feeling machine. It's not as mushy as the letter of 22s, but it's not great. It's not real snappy. And the print quality is only a one half. It's okay. It's not great. So it gets a one and a half. Maybe it should be a two. But I have to decide to get rid of some machines, and I find myself simply not using this machine very much. It stays in the closet a lot. And so that's a, a deciding factor also. If it stays in the closet and I'm not using it very much, then hey, I, it should find a better home. Lastly, and this might be the most controversial, the Corona 4 from the late 1920s. It's beautiful. It scores a one on the looks department. But as far as feel, uh, haptics, and print quality, I'm sorry, they're both zeros. I've spent several hundred dollars buying it and getting it restored with a new platen, so I'm sure I'll be taking a financial loss on this machine, but it only scores a one, and really all I find I'm doing with it is I'm keeping it out as a, as a uh, display piece. And that's not what it should be used for. It should be used as a typewriter, a practical typewriter. Well, so there you go. That's the hit list. Well, in the life of a typewriter collector and typewriter user, obviously you can't keep buying typewriters just because they're out there. You have to kind of make a decision about your priorities because space and money and time is, is limited. And so I found myself um, having to decide to limit my collection, to get rid of some machines, and maybe in doing this I'll be making room for other machines that are better better suited for my uses and likes. But uh, this is kind of what you do as a collector of anything, is you have to decide to prioritize and uh, limit what you do. Well, I'm hoping that these five machines here will find good homes uh, by typewriter aficionados in Phoenix, and I uh, intend on trying to get a little bit of money for them. I might take a loss on a few of them, but I'm hoping that uh, I can f they can find good homes and uh, so it's a great opportunity to meet uh, a part of the typewriter community that I, I haven't been able to meet before except only through their blogs and websites and whatnot. And so I'm looking forward to this coming Saturday's Type In and I will be blogging more on the road and until later, 
you have yourself a great day.